So what I have here is a wiring schematic for an older air handler. Um, this is out of a Goodman unit. And I actually have all the components for this system as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of hop back and forth between this schematic and the actual components and show you how all this stuff gets wired together, how it works, and how we can learn how to diagnose this. So to begin, our blower motor, which is right here, this runs on 240 volts. So we need two separate 120 volt lines coming in to power that motor. So that's what we have right here. We have L1 and L2. Now this is the power coming in from our shutoff switch on the outside of the unit. So when we go walk up to a unit to turn it on and off, that little switch, that's where this power is coming from. So this is the beginning of the inside of the air handler here. This is our power coming in. What we have here, these two blocks, is a Molex plug. So we have a male and a female part of the Molex plug because it comes apart. So let's trace the wiring. We have a black wire coming in from our unit shutoff switch to the male side of our Molex plug here. It continues through the Molex plug and it goes down to one terminal on our transformer. So this is our 240 volt transformer right here. We have the other 120 volt line coming into our Molex plug, coming back out the female side, and that goes to another terminal on our transformer. So we got 120 coming in on the black, 120 coming in on the red for a total of 240 volts on this primary side of our transformer. Now this voltage is going to go on to serve two purposes. One, we need that 240 volts to actually run this blower motor down here. And the second is that we're going to use this transformer to step it down to 24 volts. And that is the control voltage we need. That is the voltage that will go to our thermostat. It's going to come down to our fan relay board, which we see right here in our diagram. It is going to go out to our contactor in the condensing unit outside to pull that in to start that unit up. So all that control voltage all starts right here on this transformer that is getting pulled off of this 240 volts coming in. So when we look at the black wire coming in, we see on the diagram there is a purple wire coming off of it. And when we trace that wire all the way out to where it goes on our schematic, we see it goes right into our blower motor. So what we have here is 120 volts coming in our transformer, coming right back off that same terminal, and it's always going to our blower. So we constantly have 120 volts coming to this motor here all the time. But the blower motor is a 240 volt motor so it's not going to run until it gets that other 120 volt leg right here so the way we control turning this motor on and off is just to control one leg of that 120 because that's all we need to do to shut this on and off so we can have constant power coming in on this purple wire to the blower motor and we can use the other 120 volts to go through a relay to turn the motor on and off so we see that red wire coming off the other terminal and that is going to our relay board so when we look at our fan relay board we're going to see a black box on it and that is the actual relay itself for it's right here on the schematic we can see our wires going to three terminals on a black box so this is the actual switch that will either turn on or turn off that 120 volt leg that we need to turn the blower motor on so on this relay you're going to see three terminals one's going to be labeled normally open one will say normally closed or nc and then there is a common Basically, what this is, is that the these are the default positions of the switch that's inside the relay when the system is not calling for the bloater motor to come on. So in between heating or cooling cycles when the system is not running, this is the default position of the switch. So in between cooling cycles, the switch will be closed between NC and common. At the same time, the switch is not closing the connection between normally open and common. So in between cooling cycles, we can see that the 120 volts coming from our transformer cannot flow through to the common to turn on the blower motor. When the fan relay board gets the low voltage signal to turn the blower on, the switch will revert to the opposite position. The switch will can close the connection between normally open and common 
and our 120 volts will be able to then travel through to turn on our blower motor. At the same time, the switch will disconnect between normally closed and common. So we're going to see a purple wire that comes off of that normally closed terminal and that purple wire is going to go back up to our Molex plug. What that wire is, is for a heat strip. If we were to follow that all the way back, this is the male portion of our Molex plug here. And we'll see that purple wire goes to a switch that turns on our heating system. So whenever the heating, whenever the switch is closed and there's power running through it to turn our heaters on, we're going to have 120 volts on that purple wire that goes back to that terminal. Now, if you're still following along with me, what we end up with here is 120 volts on that purple wire at a terminal that goes nowhere when the system is running. Because as we stated, whenever the system is on, that switch is open between normally closed and common. So why would we send 120 volts there if it's not going to go anywhere? The whole purpose of that wire there is that if your heat strips were to ever stay in the on position, let's say this switch gets welded closed, you're always going to have 120 volts on that purple wire. So when your thermostat satisfies in the house, let's say you're setting the heat to 70 degrees, the house hits 70 degrees, and now your thermostat is trying to shut the system down. When it goes to shut the blower off on the relay, it is going to close the contact between normally closed and common. And if we still have power on that purple wire because our switch is welded closed and the heaters will not shut off, that 120 volts will be able to travel on through to the blower motor and force the blower motor to run as long as the heat strips are on. So it's like a safety feature. You don't want your heat strips running without a blower motor. It's very dangerous. But if you don't have heat strips in your air handler, that purple wire is doesn't do anything. Okay, so the last wire on high voltage we have to go over before we jump into the low voltage control side is this one wire between common and the blower motor itself. Now, our schematic here is showing that it is a red wire, but it's not always going to be a red wire. Your blower motor is going to have different color wires coming off of it, um, and what these different colored wires are are different speeds for the fan. So a black wire, for example, will be high speed. A red wire will be low speed. Sometimes you might see a blue wire, which is a medium speed. But basically, you're not going to use all those wires um, on your blower. You're just going to use one. Um, sometimes you'll have more elaborate control boards that allow you to use different speeds for different you know, heating and cooling modes. But in this diagram here, it's just pick one, you know, one speed. It's either red, which is a low speed, or black, which is the high speed. Now, as you can see here, the black wire coming from our blower motor is going to two terminals here labeled M1 and M2. What those are are dead terminals. They don't do anything. They don't go anywhere. This is just where you park unused wires. So because this diagram is using the red as our blower speed, it's hooking up to common to the blower. And the black, which is high speed for the blower, is not being used. So we're just parking it on M1. Now, if you wanted to run your blower at a higher speed, you would just switch those wires around. You would put your black on common, run that back to the motor, and the red would just go back to one of these two terminals and park there. All right, so now we're ready to dive into our low voltage control wiring. And as I stated earlier, that all starts on the secondary side of our transformer. So when we trace these lines out, we're going to see a red wire coming off the transformer. And that is going to go all the way to a terminal on your fan relay that's labeled transformer R. So on the board, the transformer R power is going to go through a fuse, which is not shown on the diagram here. And it's eventually going to make its way to the R terminal on the board. Now coming off the other side of a transformer, we're going to have a blue wire that goes to a terminal on the fan board labeled transformer common. And this completes a 24 volt circuit that we could now use for control wiring. Now as long as we have a good fuse and our transformer is sending up 24 volts, that 24 volts is going to travel up a red wire that is going to go to the R terminal on our thermostat. 
When our thermostat calls for cooling, it's going to do two things. It's going to send 24 volts to the Y terminal, and it's also going to send 24 volts to the G terminal. Now, the 24 volts on that G terminal is going to come back to our fan relay board to a G terminal on the board. And this is that G terminal is what actually activates the relay itself to switch. When the thermostat is satisfied and it goes to shut the cooling system off, it will kill the power to that green terminal and our switch will revert back to default position and the blower shuts off. Now that is only half the air conditioning system. The other half is the condensing unit outside. And that wiring is not actually here on the unit just yet. The thermostat is going to send another 24 volt signal on the Y terminal of the thermostat in cooling mode. Now that wire off the Y terminal might come down to outside of the air handler area, but it's not going to get tied into the fan relay board. There is no Y terminal. There is no cooling terminal on this. So that wire is actually going to get connected to um, a wire that's run up to the air handler from your condensing unit. It's going to be two wires. It's going to be red and white. And that wire from your Y terminal is going to go directly out to the contactor. That 24 volts is going to go through the contactor, pull it in, the outdoor unit is going to turn on, and that 24 volts will then return on a, the other wire, um, which will be either red or white, and that wire will then connect to the common on the fan relay board to complete the entire circuit. Now this is a little different than the newer control boards today, which actually have a more elaborate control board, they have a Y terminal on them, and so forth. So that is basically it. That, are, that is the absolute basics of these older systems that just have a fan relay board in them. And if you can spend a little time to go over and comprehend everything I told you in this video, you're going to have the knowledge and the skills you need to learn how to diagnose these things without somebody actually holding your hand anymore. I hope that stuff helped you guys, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.